G'day, I'm Chris Air, and today I've got the Genesis Origins add-on mod. This does require the use of Pinnacle as well on top of that, as there are some size variations depending on the origin. This origin adds in five new origins, two low impact origins, two medium impact origins, and one high impact origin. Let's run through them. Starting off with our low impact origins, we have the Gasling origin. Sometimes when gas are born from the fires of the Never, they are changed. Some decide to leave the Never and enter the feared overworld. Your primary active ability is a fireball. The, this pretty much is the basic gas fireball that you can just launch at any time using your primary ability key, which is usually bind to G by default. Now there are a few little quirks about this thing. Sometimes when it hits directly on a block, it may not actually cause any form of damage. Sometimes it will. Sometimes it will leave fire behind. Sometimes it won't. It's a little bit weird and quirky in how it functions. And you can also combo this with your slow falling ability because you're a gassy gas, you're gaseous, you're made mostly of gas, making you extremely lightweight, to potentially use this as some form of rocket jump. Be careful though, you do still take a fair amount of damage from your own explosives. It's just a useful way to maybe propel yourself off of a wall, but you'll get the most out of it when you do it when you've already jumped up into the air. So pretty much approach the edge, jump, and then flick down, press G, and then use it to get a little extra propulsion into the air. It's not much. I don't know if it's warranted to really use a rocket jump here in the sense of what it would be to get around, but it's a little neat thing you have. On top of those main two things, you also do have a few other additional quirks. You, your hunger will decrease at a faster rate than usual, so be very aware of that. You will need to eat more food. You'll need to, you'll get less natural regeneration out of each full saturation bar, so it's a pretty good neat thing to know. But at the same time, you also only have seven hearts rather than the usual 10. And then just another thing that you may or may not notice, it's not really too important. You're slightly transparent. It's not too noticeable. You're just a wee bit transparent. You know, it's not really much to worry about. The next low impact origin is the Arcanite. Show them your power. As origin and technicality is a low impact origin by how it's being categorized in this mod, but it does have a bit of an effect that you can get. But basically, when you first find this origin, you'll have a mana pool, you'll have no abilities whatsoever, and you've got less hearts. You get these abilities by grinding up EXP. There are multiple different levels to this, so let's run through them. At level 5, XP wise, you'll get Fireball, which requires 35 mana. At level 10, you unlock Lightning Strike. At level 20, you unlock Wither Call. At level 50, you unlock Plasma Immunity. And at level 100, you'll unlock Flight. When you pick this origin, it'll give you seven enchanting bottles as well as 10 Lapis Lazuli by default. This seven EP XP bottles was enough to get you to mo level four. Then you just need like a little bit more XP to get to level five. Now, the biggest thing you're probably thinking here, do I need to keep at the level that's needed for each ability or do I just unlock it permanently once I reach that level? Once you reach level five, you'll get an advancement that will pop up, granting you your first ability, which is the fireball ability. This fireball ability Ability is kind of similar to the fireball of the gasling origin not too much difference there but the other question is do you keep this if you lose your levels or you spend those levels yes all you need to do is to get to each level threshold once to unlock the ability and then you permanently unlock it this does mean that you can do enchantments and you don't need to worry about losing access to abilities that you've grinded so hard to get access to and it does mean that like the really powerful abilities are very very long grinds to get to and require either mass exp farms or just don't spend any levels whatsoever and hope you eventually get to level 100. Your lightning strike that you get at level 10 is a very interesting ability. You can toggle this ability on and off by pressing F or whatever key that you have used to swap what's in your offhand. Now, when this is toggled on, you get a very interesting effect of whenever you hit a mob of any sort, a lightning strike will come down and hit them. Kind of like how channeling works with a trident when you're in the rain. Just one thing, this will work regardless of whether you're in the rain or not. Secondly though, this will also hurt you if the fire splash from it does get to you directly and this also can be a very dangerous game for example let's say you strike a creeper you didn't kill it successfully now it's a supercharged creeper that's going to cause a whole lot of problems <laughs> or let's say when you hit a pig it's going to turn to a zombie pigment if you don't kill it instantaneously a very useful ability to have once you hit level 10. when you reach level 20 you unlock wither call which effectively speaking is just fireball 2.0 i wouldn't say it's a better fireball as it's just a wither head rather than a fire 
fireball that doesn't do explosive damage but leaves a wither effect instead. And if you've noticed when watching this footage here, I was also making use of the lightning strike ability at the same time because that lightning strike will toggle whenever you hit something with a fireball or the wither core ability. So overall, can be very useful for ranged attacks, doing a lot of potent damage in a very short amount of time. When you reach level 50, you get something very powerful and useful to your origin. You become immune to not only fire damage, but also lightning based damage. This means that you can start using your lightning strikes in close combat without hurting yourself in the process. Because up until this point here, you're better off using it in combination with your fireball or your wither call because the lightning damage as well as the fire damage that it also creates will also affect you. But now at level 50, that is completely gone. You are now immune to that damage. Once you reach level 100, you unlock flight, which is effectively just having elytra wings on permanently. You can't enchant them, you can't do anything with them because in theory, you technically don't have them, but you actually do at the same time. Ultimately, it's like one of those things where it's like, it's you can get yourself the elytra flight. It still just requires a pretty heavy grind like it probably that it, like it usually does in normal vanilla anyway. Next, we roll into the middle impact origins, the two impact origins. We first got the dragon kin, all but one of the great dragons dragons left the end. Where they went is unknown. What we do know is that you were born of them. What is them? I don't know, don't ask me, I'm not your mum. <laughs> the best way to describe this origin at a glance is it's effectively a Elytra origin if it was a two impact origin that was also kind of a dragon. You have the Elytra wings by default and you also have that same propulsion ability used by the Elytra. Though it's key to your secondary ability key instead of your primary ability key because now you've also got a dragon's fireball which is both a mixture of a fireball and also leaves a ring of dragon's breath around your current location. A little bit of a quirk about this, this is doing instant damage damage so undead mobs will heal from the purple dragon's breath. Yeah you heard me correctly. <laughs> it's something to be very very aware of if you do let's say hit a husk or shoot a fireball at a zombie a husk at a spider that's not the right thing a skeleton <laughs> they will actually heal whatever damage you deal to them as long as they're within the purple mist other mobs on the other hand though will take a large amount of damage that will pretty quickly kill them depending on their defense levels so it's a little bit of a mixed bag don't use it against undead mobs because all you'll do is heal them other additional changes is that you will have slowness too whenever you're on ground. It's one of those things. It's just like you have want to be on in the air because you're a dragon, you know? You won't have the slowness when you're in the air, but the moment you're on the ground, you'll start getting slowness too. Your dragon stomach also can't eat anything aside from meat. Meat's your only diet, it is what it is. And because of your being a dragon, you have a little bit more defense points by default, which could be useful. I don't know, it's up to you on that one. Next, you have the Infested Origin. Now, the Infested Origin is supposedly descended from the Scuttling Silverfish, and they hold very many of the same aspects. One of those cool things is you notice that you'll spawn deep in stone underground, which also means that you can burrow through stone throughout the entire world, and this is gonna be something that you wanna do very consistently, because if you do spend a elongated amount of time outside of stone, you'll slowly deteriorate, which will probably kill you. It's just one of those things where just, it, it takes so long to decrease that as long as you just go into stone every now and then you should be cool beans. If you're in the surface world, you will be blinded unless you're wearing either a pumpkin head or one of the various different mob heads. An easy one to get is a wither if you don't want to deal with the pumpkin's little weird uh, bordery thingy bob. And then other things along those lines. Now, some of the beautiful things about this is silverfish are going to be friendly towards you. So going through those strongholds are going to be so much nicer because silverfish don't matter. You can leave the spawner there as a bit of a deterrent to get to the end portal that you like using, even though that won't do particularly much. Whenever you take damage, it will automatically spawn a silverfish around you if you're on top of stone. This does have a brief cooldown effect, and this also can be useful and also useless at the same time because it also relies upon what type of mobs the silverfish is going to attack as it won't attack things that attack you unless it's a player and stuff along those lines so it's really really good in pvp you're smaller than a normal person you have permanent night vision whilst underground and you also have a few less hearts than usual overall very interesting origin then we've got the only three impact origin of this pack, Golemborn. Golemborn are few and far. Goliaths, like unto their forefathers, they retain some of their strength, but only some of their size. 
Now, the Goldborn origin is a very interesting origin overall. Now, one of the first quirks I want to point out here is that its spawn point is set to be in a village. This can often cause potential issues, potential problems, and sometimes if the game can't solve itself out, it'll either crash out or just default you to somewhere near the normal spawn. Not precisely where the normal spawn is. It is very weird, as you'd see in one of the clips that I'll be showing off here. Now, the little bits and pieces here is you'll do higher damage when you're not using a weapon, which is about six, about four damage not being a crit, 6 damage being a crit against an Iron Golem, mind you, something with a fairly decent amount of defense. Also, whenever you hit mobs with your bare hands, you'll launch them up into the air, kind of similar to how Iron Golems do it, just you tend to launch them a lot higher than what an Iron Golem will do. You are also a slightly taller than the average Minecraft player, about another quarter of a block taller, which is pretty neat overall. You've also got your defense bars is automatically going to be equal to your iron armor value because you're technically made of steel in a way. You, you, you get what I mean with that one. One of the biggest things though is you're a lot slower than usual. You can't use shields. Bulky armor does not fit on you, which, you know, kind of makes sense considering that you've got high armor points by default. It makes sense you can't pretty much put any high end armor on as well as because you're heavy, you're a lot slower, you need a lot of hunger to move around, but the biggest difference is that you can only eat metal items. Normal food is completely ruled out, you can't eat any normal foods. Now this food pretty much is iron, gold, golden food is still a thing you can eat and never ride, as well as copper. This includes the nugget variations of these items, the raw variations of these items, the, ore the smelted variations of these items, as well as the blocks. Eating any kind kind of neverite though will give you a bonus buff. If you eat a neverite ingot, it will give you the buffs equivalent to a golden apple, to an enchanted golden apple, which is your typical absorption, your resistance, your fire resistance, and your saturation, I think it was. It was an additional one there. But then whenever you eat a block of neverite, you'll get given saturation 3, regeneration 4, haste 2, strength 3, absorption 3, resistance 3, luck 2, and fire resistance. All these are various lengths of time, like you got saturation for about 10 seconds, regen 4 for about 3 minutes, haste 2 for about 3.5, strength 3 for about 4.5, absorption 3 for about 5 minutes, resistance 3 for about 6.5, luck is about 8 minutes, and fire resistance is at 10 minutes. So you get a lot of massive buffs if you use 9 neverite ingots in order to consume a neverite block. Very expensive, but you do get a lot of buffs out of it. Unfortunately though, some of the more usable ones, some of the more useful, really potent things you get out of that are very short time frame, so I don't know if it will quite end up being worth eating neverite blocks for these beautiful buffs, but that'll be your own decision to decide on that one. Anyway, what are your thoughts on those five origins from this collection? Do you think it's a good set of origins? Do you think they're cool? What are your thoughts on them? Let me know in the comments down below. And maybe click this video on screen now to go check out some more Minecraft mods. Bye-bye!